Here we are, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Space, the final frontier. I am Captain Frank Lee English, and these are the voyages of the starship HMSS Imperialize. Our mission? To explore strange new worlds, to seek out new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Rousing stuff, Captain English, sir. <laughs> you really think so? I was afraid it would sound a little bit cliched. Uh, the last thing I'd want would be for anyone listening to think that was going to be representative of the quality of all our dialogue throughout this entire voyage. Perhaps it's best not to heighten expectations too early on, Boyo. Yes, Jones. A healthy dose of self-deprecation should neutralize the mildly xenophobic nature of the mission we've been tasked with by Her Majesty Queen of Great Britain and of the Commonwealth Realms. Yeah, so long as we can avoid resorting to trite nationalistic jokes, we should be fine. Yes, I absolutely agree, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Well, I'm past. Who's for tea? You stay here at the controls, Jones, while I navigate to the ship's kitchen facilities to acquire a refreshing beverage. The walk will give me the chance to familiarize myself with the intuitive navigation system. Can you grab us a cup, too? Certainly, Jones. It will be my pleasure. And as good a reason as any to practice using the intuitive inventory system. I'll be on my way now, just as soon as I choose to exit this chair. It's Whale's own son, Sub Lieutenant Jones. It's Allard, the Lewis to my Morse. It's Allard, the Gromit to my Wallace. It's Allard. The Andrew Ridgely to my George Michael. Stop looking at me, Boyo. You're starting to creep me out. Sub Lieutenant Jones! Aye, Boyo? How do you take your tea? Milk? Sugar? Lukewarm? Just in a cup would be lovely, thanks. Can I get you anything else from the kitchen? A biscuit, perhaps? Oh, I'd love a biscuit. Bring us back a Jaffa cake. Jaffa cakes aren't biscuits, they're cakes. How can they be cakes? Look at all the size of them. Weren't you taught that size isn't important? <laughs> it's never been an issue for me, boyo. Uh, uh, me neither. <laughs> so how's the family back in old Blighty? Been keeping up with the Joneses? Mum and Dad are fine. And Harrod's getting ready to go to uni in Swansea. Fantastic! What's she studying? 3D computer animation. Oh! Well, uh, that's a degree, I guess. Don't mind me. Best stow this for now. I would do well to study these closely in case of an emergency, like we're stranded immobile in space. Why, the humble paperclip, a staple of any adventure gamer's inventory. Now, to find the kitchen. If memory serves me correct, it's just down this corridor, beyond the fourth wall. That's the gravity simulation switch. The animators rather we leave it on. Less things to move. Of course, it lacks the precision of a mouse and keyboard. It's Allard's mug, isn't it? It's for my Rosie Lee. Sorry, Cockney crockery. Surely you can't be serious. I am feeling rather peckish. Ah! 
That settled it. I'm going gluten-free when I get back to Old Blighty. Mild green washing up liquid. Why? It's plenty to share. What are your prime directives? I don't suppose you've kept in touch with Matilda or any of the other house robots? Ha! Remember that time you fell foul to a case of mistaken identity at Moss Eisley? <laughs> was Vista as bad for you as it was for the rest of us? You know, we have a lot in common. In the movies, the evil villain always ends up being the supercomputer or Alan Rickman. It really takes the misery out of making tea. the downside of having a sentient being responsible for making the tea is that every so often it forgets how much milk to add. A poison chalice? I don't think I could. I'm happy with the current level of cleanliness. It's our autonomous beverage dispensing robot, Gertie. Any danger of making that tea, Boyo? Awfully sorry for the delay. Never mind, Boyo. How did you manage to carry it in there without spilling any? I've just been very careful. Ever since that whole Deepwater Horizon incident. Oh, terribly sorry. I appear to have given you my cup. What? But that's disgusting. It's got just saliva over it and everything. That is totally against health and safety. I think you're overreacting. It's got your saliva on it, Bet. It's like we've been kissing. That is like sexual harassment as well. Good heavens! What a waste of perfectly good tea. I think we should be more concerned about the irreparable damage done to the ship's steering system. Both problems, by the way, are your fault. You know, in various cultural and religious ceremonies, the symbolism behind sharing a cup is quite unifying. Regardless, we'll have plenty of time to argue about this now that we're stranded. Unless, of course, we can replace the controls with something else. When you say we... I mean the royal we. I'll sort this out. Don't move. I don't want you dribbling on anything else. Honestly, you're worse than the elderly. to be stuck. With great power comes great responsibility.
Remarkable. It would appear one of our Oxbridge-educated engineers has installed hinges on... It might fit Allard's dainty hand. I have a bit more girth. You found something to replace the controls you... Here, plug this in. See if it works. No joy, Boyo. What? Is it supposed to be plug and play? No, Boyo. You'll have to install the drivers first. Well, can't you just download them in here? The Wi-Fi can't reach this part of the ship. Try getting online in one of the other rooms. See if you can download the drivers onto something and bring it here. I suppose you'll just be sitting here in the meantime. That's how the genre works, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke, well, it's probably a tedious puzzle to fix it. Now, to download this driver, I just need to connect to the internet first. Bingo! Found it! Hmm, very odd. It won't let me save onto the disk. Let's see if prodding this around fixes anything. Aha! I can't seem to save onto it for some reason. I can't seem to save onto it for some reason. Fantastic! Now to quickly copy this driver. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, gosh, is that the time? It'll be starting to get dark outside. Let's check up on Alec and see if he's dried off. It's remarkable how much information can be stored on something so compact. Playing up, Boyo. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. It felt like someone else was in control of my inhibitions. Just give me the driver so we can GTFO. GTFO? Get things functioning and online. You need to swat up in your acronyms. FFS. 
for future scenarios. Here, install this and we should be underway again. Uh, you could have used my USB pen, you know. What? Is that another one of your acronyms I'm supposed to know? What? Universal Serial Bus? Ha! <laughs> serial Bus. I know you're just making that one up. Um, well, Boyo, I've got some good news and some bad news. Which one do you want first? Give me the grim, demoralizing reality first, then ensure I quickly forget its severity with a light-hearted human interest tale, preferably involving a cat and a musical instrument. All right, Boyo. Well, the bad news is that before this driver will work, one of us is going to have to descend into the dark depths of the ship to perform the emergency systems reset procedure. You mean turn everything off and on again? Yes, but the good news is it's a one-person job, so only one of us will have to do it. Yeah, presumably I'll be the one doing the legwork, as usual. Well, if you want, we could make it seem like you had a choice in the matter. Here, we'll flip for it. Heads or tails? Tails never fails. It's heads. Blast! I can't help but feel that somehow that was always going to happen. What fates impose that men must needs abide, it boots not to resist both wind and tide. Gosh, the writing on this voyage just stepped up a level. That was borderline Shakespeare. Aye, borderline. Right, I'm off. I haven't been up here long and already I think I've started to lose muscle density. It's just like exercising at the gym, albeit without the judgment of others. If you want a job done around here, you've got to do it yourself. I'm sure this will come in, wait for it, handy, eh? <laughs> It isn't great for the environment. Replacement ribbons. The box is sealed shut. Why, it would be impossible to determine the fate of any biological life form inside. It has a warmth that you simply don't get with digital. Especially if you burn the sleeve as well. Preserved thanks to the tireless efforts of hipsters from all corners of Shoreditch.
It's a precision-engineered German motorized screwdriver. That should significantly reduce the risk of death by electrocution. This should do the trick. Uh, no, that's mm -hmm. yes, right. Oops, God, I'm <laughs> ever so clumsy. Ah, well, no harm done. <clears throat> Let's check back with Alan and see if that sorted everything. Yeah, it's starting to give me the creeps. Right, I'll have this open in a jiffy. I can't use these two together. If I do that, I'll have to go on a... Sub-Lieutenant Jones! Aye, boyo? What is it you're tinkering with there, Jones? That isn't... That isn't our reconnaissance rover you're disassembling, is it? Well, but, funny story. While you were downstairs attending to that very complicated, laborious task, flicking that switch on and off, I've been running a variety of pre-mission calibration tests on the Beagle 2-2. I presume that's why the floor's covered with bits of toy Hot Wheels track. Firstly, the fact that this modular vehicular pathway simulation system happens to be mass-produced and branded as a children's toy is irrelevant. And secondly, yes. That's all well and good, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. However, if I recall correctly, we were specifically advised that the Beagle 2-2 tended to function significantly better when its complicated array of electronics and mechanical components were positioned inside its aluminium housing. Look, I just have to make a few minor repairs. During a centrifugal force resistance simulation, the rover proved exceedingly resistant. So it uh, flew off the loop the loop pit. That would be a valid interpretation of events, yes. Sounds like I'm going to be required to go on some kind of scavenger hunt. What do you need? To get the rover going again? For the time being, that's all I feel I'm obligated to offer, yes. I think the rigorous nature of the, uh, test may have burned out the main motor. I see. So, I'll have to find something to create some sort of electromagnet that'll revolve when a current is passed through it. I'll have to fashion a pulley system of sorts to drive power to the wheels. Something with a taut elastic band should do the trick, like an alluring undergarment. Now, if I was to remove the elastic... Alternatively, Bert, you could just always grab me a spare. We've got a cupboard full of them. Who's driving the boat? Nobody. We're tied. I turned the autopilot on. Hmm. She was only installed a week ago and already her standards are slipping. I don't suppose you noticed anything out of the ordinary earlier when I was performing that emergency systems reset procedure? Specifically immediately once the power came back on? No. Why, should I have? Well, well I don't know. Probably not. Forget I mentioned it. Be sure to put your toys away when you're done. Let it not be said I don't give you anything, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. 
An unhealthy reliance on migraine medication already proves that, but... Now get this mess cleared up and put the Beagle Tutu back together! By Jove, it works! In 600,000 yards, your destination will be on the right. You've reached your destination. Sub Lieutenant Jones, we've arrived! The new, new world! Quickly, break open a container of property of ER2 flags and prepare a landing party! As much as I'd love to jump onto the surface and soak up the radioactive atmosphere of this uncharted, most likely fatally hazardous planet, I think it may be an idea to send the Beagle 2-2 down first, just to get a feel for the place. I considered your suggestion, Sub-Lieutenant Jones, and have made the executive decision to send the Beagle 2-2 down for a quick recce, prior to making our own triumphant descent. The extra time will allow us to properly consider which 19th century member of the aristocracy to name this place after. Launching probe. Last! The motor was a dud! Probably made by a Brummie or someone else from the north. I wouldn't say Birmingham's in the north. Anyone above Enfield's north as far as I'm concerned, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. Well, we'll have to go down and salvage the rover. It'll look very embarrassing if we lose another one of these. Set us down!
you were meant to use another point of reference, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. Fine, boyo. By that gorilla. Good grief! That's the second biggest monkey I've ever seen. I think he's holding the Beagle 2-2. Too, too. Put that down, you damn dirty ape! Come on, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. Let's get after him. leaving without a souvenir. claim to this new, new world, we need to remove their flag and hoist ours in its place. Why? Didn't they teach you history at school, Sub-Lieutenant Jones? That's just how these things work. Lieutenant Jones, 
Amuse yourself until I get back. I'll try and recollect the last couple of hours. Hey, bandito! I make no bones about how grim that was. Oh, what have we here? Either the upholstery's been woven from tinsel, or we've hit the jackpot! It's an elegant lady's purse, filled with loose change. If you want a job done around here, you've got to do it yourself. is sealed shut. Why, it would be impossible to detect. Hmm. Property of Irvin Schrödinger. While I'm here, I may as well give it a go. Gotcha! Yeah. 
You know the old saying? A frog in the hand is worth two in the biological science testing facility. The box is sealed shut. Why, it would be impossible to determine the fate of any biological life form inside. is sealed shut. Why, it would be impossible to determine the fate of any biological life form inside. How convenient! The cheese sticks to his moist green flesh, thus progressing this ethically questionable puzzle. Insipid rotten lactose. It pales in comparison. 
percent to our superior, deliciously aged rotten lactose. Well, that's diplomacy off the dining table. Someone coming. Will I hoist it now, boyo? Steady, Jones. It isn't official unless we play the national anthem. Fortunately, I have it saved on this anodized Good, yeah. Look for 
over there. Why does it always rain in England? Faded glory in time.